What's up guys? I want to do a quick one on ETL jobs and moving data from ESRI's SDE over into Postgres PostGIS. If you're a proper cool ESRI user, you're probably already using Postgres and PostGIS with SDE and storing your data with the PostGIS native geometry type. But let's suppose for a minute that you and I are not cool and we have some uh, we're still using like SDE native geometry types in SQL Server or what have you. So I recently had to redo my whole ETL job stack. I used GeoKettle and I used GeoKettle from the point after I have drugged the data kicking and screaming out of SDE and then GeoKettle takes over and moves it in Postgres, PostGIS. Before I'd been using an extraction process based on the SD binary, just doing SD to SHP. And because of differences between SD versions and 32-bit and 64-bit, that had not been working out particularly well. So now I've changed the whole process and rethought how I was doing it. And I've got a, a workflow that's pretty good, I think. Makes a lot of sense. Let's take a look at that. Let's see, we need this guy. I've got two GeoKettle jobs right now, and I'll have three eventually. And these are just, they're identical. The only difference is how frequently I run them. I have an SD monthly for data I pull across once a month, weekly for once a week, and I'm gonna have one for every day because we have a lot of customers that think their data needs to be refreshed every day, even though it generally doesn't. But I'll have that as well. These jobs are all identical. What these jobs look like in GeoKettle is this. It's very straightforward. I'm using variables in GeoKettle here to kind of genericize different tasks. So say I want to get the voting precincts. I'm setting a three different variables and I'm setting them based on the uh, where it's coming from and what it is and where it's going. So first I need the SD connection I'm going to drag the data out with. And here we have our SD connection information and that points to this folder I have SD connections and these are from your user folder app data roaming Esri art catalog something something something. Whenever you, in Art Catalog, make an SDE connection and save it, it sticks an entry for it there. I would advise not making your ETL package hit it there, just in case your profile becomes corrupt or you move it to a different machine. Just copy those .sd files over into this folder, and that way you don't have to worry about them getting messed up later. So it's pointing to an SDE connection. It's giving it the name of the layer and the name of the transformation to run for that layer. So here I'm going to one of our servers and I'm getting a particular shapefile and then I'm going to a different transformation. That information is passed over to another variable that says status good. So at this point we're just saying everything's okay so far. All we've done is set variables. If you had a problem at this stage, I don't know what to tell you. You're a uh, don't buy a lottery ticket, your life sucks. So you've got those four variables set, you go to extract SD data, and this is running a Python file. It's running some ArcPy. Uh, as I said, I was using SD bin folder and those SD binaries to pull stuff out, and I was running into lots of problems. So it's a drag to have to install an entire ArcGIS desktop client on an ETL machine to pull data off. This has been the most reliable way I've found to do it. And your Python file ends up looking uh, something like this. This is very simple. It takes two arguments, the connection you want to use and the uh, layer name. So you're using uh, ArcPy and OS and Glob and Sys. We're going to grab those arguments we're going to remove the shape file that we've tried to, if it already exists. 
Then we're just doing our one ArtPy command, ArtPy feature class to feature class conversion, in features, out features, and out name. And that's it. It's going to connect to, use that SD connection, uh, grab your layer, pull it into a shape file, and off it goes. So, easy enough. We've got our data out. Now we can do cool, regular stuff. If the extraction goes bad, and it will detect if Python gets an error during any of that, it'll go over and set the status variable to bad. It's set it to failure before it was set to success. And then it's going to send a oh shit email, things went bad, you need to check this out. And it's going to update a table I have in Postgres that I used to keep track of the last time a particular ETL job for a layer was run and what the status of that run was. So that way I have a list, throw it on a web page and I can see the status of everything that's been going on. If that goes well so far, and the only reason it shouldn't really is if SD is down, which happens, uh, you go over to load data. Load data is going to use a transformation, and the transformation is going to be what you set up in your variables for that particular layer. When you use a variable, and you're going to have to full screen 1080p this to read some of this. There's not a way to zoom in this in GeoKettle. Uh, when you use a reference a variable in GeoKettle, you do it with a dollar sign, a curly bracket, the name of that variable, and curly bracket. So we set a variable named transform, and that's what it's going to call here. And it's going to set a log of the name of that transformation as well. So now we're going to go off to that transformation. That transformation is generally very straightforward. It gets the shape file. It sets the, uh, the SRS. I found that GeoKettle does not read the PRJ for a shape file. And when it gets the geometry, it does not have an SRS associated with it. So if you have a constraint on that in your PostGIS Postgres layer, which you should, uh, it's going to reject that out of hand. So you set the SRS and you give it your table output. Having these in a separate transformation for each one lets me map fields. It also lets me do extra steps, like some of these, uh, I may want to count, add a few calculated fields. I may want to do some filtering. Uh, and you can do that in each one of these individual transformations. So one job that runs everything, but then one transformation for every layer. And you can as well here, uh, most layers, I find commit is fine. Some of them are kind of squirrely. There's, there's just crap in them. So I do it as insert a row at a time and just ignore errors because it's just got crap in it and it's just always going to have crap in it. So it runs that transformation. The transformation went well. It updates that table if it went bad. It sets the status to bad, sends me an email, and then updates that table. Now, GeoKettle, and it's actually from Pentaho's original stuff that GeoKettle's kind of branched from, has an email routine in it. I have found in my organization sending an email via SMTP is fairly squirrely. Sometimes STP, SMTP ports are blocked. Uh, sometimes exchange servers move around. It's been problematic keeping that running all the time. So what I'm doing here, I'm just having it run a job that calls a Python script. And the Python script is just using URL lib to send some arguments to a, a uh, PHP script I have out on a web server that sends an email. That PHP script I use mostly in my web apps to take arguments from that web app and send me an email, like web feedback. So it takes those arguments, sends me that something bad happens, happened, and I need to go check that out. And that's it. That's how this whole ETL process I have set up works. Uh, the nice thing about this is the monthly and weekly and daily are the same. So if I need to move something to be updated more or less often, I can just cut, say, this particular 
part where it's saying the variables out here and paste it in the other one. Then it'll be running weekly instead of monthly or what have you. So it's been very stable, it's run very well, and I'm quite happy with it. And it allows me to have a very centralized, fairly genericized way to move all these layers that I can check and fix and change in one place. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm probably going to scrub out uh, the naughty bits like uh, uh, my con connection information to my Postgres server and stuff and then just throw this up in a, a GitHub repo so you can have at it. In fact, I might try to do that before I post my blog post about this particular video. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, and it's holiday time, so I probably won't do anything at all, ever, until next year. So have a good, safe holiday, and I'll see you in 2015. Bye-bye.